I'll just do. Perfect. Yes. Already automatically. I know. Oh, Jenny Caracol's online. Hi, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> I haven't been to New York in so long. I know. Don't get me started. People are arriving. Yep, we've Hello. got a lot of people arriving. We'll give them like three or four minutes and then we will start. Nice to see everyone. Perfect. Marie, since we're looking at Albertina, did you go to the new one? Yes. There's actually also a really good restaurant and bar next to it. Oh, good mm -hmm. to know. Mm -hmm. Tiny restaurant, great menu. They offer cocktail, um, um, a cocktail. Um, selection with the menu oh very nice mm -hmm. like a pairing mm -hmm. oh that's nice yeah yes they do the older i get the more i want cocktails with every meal <laughs> <laughs> i see everybody's coming in we'll get started in just a couple of minutes and um in a perfect world we'll have plenty of time to answer questions mm -hmm. so if you have any please feel free to put them uh, in the chat or the Q&A, either or. Q&A is easier because we can mark it answered, but we're happy to answer any questions. And then if we run out of time, we will answer them in an email after. Yes, definitely. It all depends how chatty we are today, Gwen. Yes, I know. Oh, and Susan Breckenridge has a question about balls. So we'll get to balls. <laughs> um, that's one of the, the things we'll talk about for winter travel. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yes. Oh, get away. You, can't, you can't leave now. You're stuck with us. <laughs> Balls and Christmas markets and everything else. And for those of you that do need to leave early, don't feel bad. I won't make you feel too guilty. We are recording and I'll send everyone a link for the webinar afterwards. But you should stay. No pressure. But thanks for coming anyways, because yes. I know we're busy. Everyone is right now. It's a little crazy for last minute right now, especially for Europe. Which is great. I hope everyone is coming to Vienna. I was just talking to the soccer this morning and she said that they were going crazy with last minute requests. So that's good. Perfect. After a year of, you know, nothing. Yeah, perfect. Good. So I have 159. Shall we just start? Shall we be no, like one more pretend? minute? Okay, one more minute. We'll, we'll be good. Yeah, my, Ger my German is coming out. We yeah, because be I mean, like that's too even for us Austrians, that would be too ambitious to start like <laughs> one minute before we before the official start. And for those of you that are just coming on, if you have questions, we will try to get to all of them. You can put them in the chat or better put them in the Q&A box because that way we can mark them once we answer them. And if you have a question and we don't get to it, um, no worries, I will email you afterwards and Marie will as well. Yes, happy to do so. Okay. Okay, two o'clock. Shall we start? Shall we yeah. go? Let's do it. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for spending a little bit of your afternoon with us. Um, please let me introduce you if you haven't met uh, Marie. She used to be based in New York, and yes. she is the market manager for the United States for Vienna Tourism, and she's been to Virtuoso events and Signature, so you might have already met her, and I will let her sort of kick us off talking about one of my absolute favorite cities in Europe, Vienna. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gwen. I'm very much excited to be here today with you. Um, first things first, that's probably the most important part. Um, let me put that away so everyone's seeing. Um, 
our contact details because if you have a question just feel free to contact either Gwen um, or me um, we are basically working very closely together so no matter what question you have we're probably able to answer it um, and the one of the most questions right now I'm getting is um, is it even possible to travel to Vienna and the simple answer is Yes, um, especially if you're vaccinated. Um, we're at, like Austria's borders are open to um, US and Canadian travelers at the moment. Um, you don't need to quarantine if you're fully vaccinated. Um, you see, um, I kind of kept it a little bit vague um, on the, on the um, uh, PowerPoint slide because you know, it rules change a little bit, especially when it comes to mask uh, requirements. Um, currently, you need to wear an FFP2 mask um, while in Vienna. That is um, kind of similar to the K95 mask in the US. Um, and you need to wear it in you know, public transportations or when you go um, into shops. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I got one here too. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, not working. Um, um, and um, I just, you know, put um, three very important links for you um, on this slide because that's basically the, the most important resource um, you need. Um, first of all, our website, um, because um, Vienna is a little bit more strict with the rules than the general of Austria. So everything you need to know about going to Vienna is on our website. Um, then I put on the, the link to the, the Ministry of Health in Austria. Um, you find everything on how to enter Austria, what to do if you're you know, what kind of rules and regulations are there if you're not vaccinated. Um, and the last one, austria.org, is actually the website of the U.S. Embassy in Washington, D.C. Um, and they um, usually have a great overview of all the rules and regulations in English. But um, be a little bit careful if there is something changing, like a huge announcement, um, they might need like a couple of hours until they put it on the website. So the first, I would say like the first go-to is the, the Ministry of Health. And I will say too, I, I participate in a lot of advisor Facebook groups and I see people asking all the time, what are the rules? And people are getting information from a lot of different places please go directly to the source. These three websites are what I'm looking at as well. I mean, I might ask guides or drivers, but I want it in writing and you should get it directly from this. And I will say also, I often check the US embassy in Vienna, but they tend to be slower to update. So this is like the most up-to-date information you can find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so first, things first Vienna where where are we like what are the, the the distances you know I'm I'm I love maps you know and I love you know kind of to get a feeling for you know how long does it take to go from what from A to B um, so first of all how can you travel from the U.S. to Vienna um, Austrian Airlines is offering direct connections currently from JFK, Newark, DC, and Chicago. Um, they are, since the US borders are opening up to Europeans um, in November, um, they're ramping up services. So um, the, the, the frequencies get a lot um, more often during the week, uh, beginning November. So great when all the Christmas markets are starting, um, that there should be plenty of connections to come to, to Vienna. Um, also, if you're deciding to fly with another airline, you know, it's extremely easy to connect through another European hub. Um, when we look at train travel, um, that's the beauty about the location of Austria and, and Vienna in general, that it's so easy to combine with other cities. Um, I, I get a lot of requests, you know, people traveling from Germany through Austria to Budapest, for example, or to the Czech Republic. So, and you can see from the train travel durations, it's two and a half hour drive to Salzburg, 
um, two and a half hours, sorry, not drive, train rides to Budapest, four and a half hours to Prague, four hours to Munich. So it's super quick and, and convenient. I will say also, um, as everyone knows, Croatia Montenegro has been so popular this year because they were open. Vienna is the perfect place to use as a stopover point. And it could be used pre or post, pre it's nice to get over jet lag. And this is the most friendly airport in Europe to navigate. So don't forget that when you're looking, if your people have an extra day or two, the airport is very accessible to town and it does make a really nice stopover to get you to the more difficult destinations. Yeah, definitely. So um, let me jump right th in it, through it. Um, why Vienna? And I'll give you like there are six main reasons for me personally why you and your clients should choose um, Vienna. First, it's an imperial heritage. It's a city of music, city of art. We Viennese truly know how to enjoy ourselves. Um, it's perfect mixture of urban and green space. And of course, there are a lot of seasonal offers, which really makes Vienna a year round destination. So, and I give you some examples of what I mean. Um, so first of all, imperial heritage. Here, for example, we see the beautiful Belvedere Palace. Um, Vienna was once the main seat um, of the Habsburg Empire. And you can really get still today a sense of how those times were because there are 27 palaces and palais throughout the city you can still experience. So for example, Belvedere now is a beautiful museum. Um, it houses a large Klimt collection and you can actually go and see um, um, the famous painting, The Kiss from Klimt there. Um, and it's just the perfect symbiosis for me. You can see, first of all, great art. Um, and then second of all, a beautiful building, um, a beautiful palace. Um, I also love Belvedere. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, we get more and more multi-generational guests and the younger kids are somewhat obsessed with palaces. Mm -hmm. And Vienna is a city where you can do palaces um, in a non-overwhelming way that's humane and easy. And they're all very central to the city center. And the draw for most people is not just the palace, but also like the beautiful grounds at Schönbrunn or the Children's Museum. So there's a lot to offer for anyone who wants that sort of sense of imperial majesty here. Yes, yes, definitely. And even here, I mean, you can also, um, you know, the, the guides at the Belvedere Palace, they also can give you a little bit of background on the building itself. So it's not just... Um, um, historians who talk about the art in the building, but also the building itself. Um, <clears throat> then I, I mean, Vienna, you can't um, miss the connection between Vienna and, and music. Um, it's, you know, the, the world's uncontested capital of music in no other city. Um, more composers have lived. Um, you know, we've been home to Mozart, Mahler, Haydn, even, and I know my, my German colleagues will, they, you know, smile always at me, but Beethoven actually lived the majority of his life in Vienna. Um, there are, you know, rumors where he had, you know, he lived in more than like 60 apartments throughout the city. And if you go through the city with like open eyes, you can see little, um, little signs on, on the buildings where it says, oh, here lived Beethoven at some point of his life. Um, so yeah, and you can still feel it in the city, um, um, today, um, because every night, um, you know, around one, uh, uh 10,000, um, music fans are treated to live classical music. And that's really something, um, you can't okay. experience in any other, um, um, city. Um, for example, here on, in this picture, you see the Vienna State Opera. And I have to say, so I'm a big music lover. I love operas. I know it's not everyone's favorite, um, but you know, usually people, when they say like, well, I have clients, they're not sure if they like the opera or it's a huge commitment. 
you know what I usually tell them? That they should get either standing tickets for like a performance at night. Um, you know, it's it's 10 euros usually. Um, it, they're great. They have a great location. You have a beautiful view on the stage and you can, you know, get a little bit of feeling for the opera. Or you do like a backstage tour um, and really, you know, take like a look behind the scenes. And I don't, have you ever done one, Gwen? Yes. Like yes. yes. And that's how I learned because I am not a giant opera fan. I've had to sit through many, but I appreciate it. But that's how I learned that Vienna is a repertoire opera house, which means mm -hmm. that every single night is a different performance, which is great if you have people going. And I've had people going to Russia before where they've been stuck in a Wagner cycle for their whole time in Russia and they just want to see something light and it's all Wagner. In Vienna, it literally changes every day, interspersed with the ballet which is nice. And for those of you that have worked with us before, you know, we give like a theater listing before guests travel. There's opera, there's symphony, there's the Philharmonic, there's the Vienna Boys Choir, love them. There's the Spanish Writing School to music. So there's so much here and that's not even touching on all the little um, smaller venues and churches where there are beautiful concerts for someone who wants a touch of culture, but not like something super overwhelming. And Margaret Dannon had a question about tickets to the opera house. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. I, I appreciate that concierges are handy, but they often add a 30% markup to the opera tickets. If you can buy them in advance, buy them direct from the opera house, there is an English language version of the Vienna Stotts opera. And when you click on buy tickets, it takes you to um, the site called Cultural, which mm -hmm. is where they sell like Vienna Boys Choir, Opera, all these tickets, English as possible, and you can buy them and download them right there. So if you've traveled, if you have had guests that travel with me and they've had opera tickets, that's a PDF they get as part of their final documents. There's nothing to lose. Easy peasy. Um, but if you get stuck, call me. I can fix it. Um, I also have secrets for sold out operas. Um, but uh, that happens. Oh, that I, happens. I, I, do, do, do you install like extra seats somewhere? Oh, I have some sources that I've tried for years to, to maintain. And Matt, um, how long would you suggest staying in Vienna to get a full immersive experience? I mean, so many oh. Americans are like um, two night stay yeah. people and that is really not enough in Vienna and in many of our destinations. And honestly, I try to talk people into four nights in Vienna because it gives them a chance for like something outside the city as well, like the Vienna woods or doing something on the Danube. So four nights is perfect, but I also know how it works with Americans and I would say no less than three nights. Yeah, that's usually my recommendation as well like aim for three nights because it's just it would be too much of a rush and that's an honest feedback I usually get especially also if people are going on a river cruise and just staying for a couple of right. hours like Vienna is so beautiful and it has so much to offer mm -hmm. um, not only like the general um, you know sites but also beautiful shopping etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah, don't um, leave without, um, you know, not only for two nights, that's not, that's not doing it justice. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, where were we? Oh, yeah, City of Art. My favorite art museum, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually, so my backdrop is the inside of that museum. Mm -hmm. um, that's the Museum of Fine Art, yeah, the Kunsthistorische right. Museum in Vienna. Um, Vienna actually has um, 100, over more than 100 museums. Um, it, it, you know, big, beautiful grand museums like the Kunsthistorische Museum or the Belvedere, we, we you know, we talked about or the Albertina, which was on the very first slide, but also like smaller quirkier museums like the, the cemetery museum or the, the, the museum of snow globes. So it's oh really- Oh my gosh, I went to that one the last time. <laughs> Is it, it's, it's fun, right? It's quirky. I, I, yeah. I typically, I ended up buying too much, but it was, it was very <laughs> interesting to go. <laughs> yeah, and, and because 
I mean, snow globes um, were invented in Vienna. Not a lot of people know that, but the, mm -hmm. the birthplace of snow globes are in Vienna. And I would say the, the museum you're looking at here, Kunsthistorisch, is in easier just to call it fine arts and completely yeah. fine to call it fine arts museum. Yeah. This is um, European Masters. Yeah. one of my favorite museums because it seems like it's always empty like the the background you see behind marie is how it can look on a typical day yeah. right now there's a super yeah. fabulous exhibition on titian and that runs did you check i it through through early spring yeah that is a separate time ticket that we're doing for all of our guests but one of my favorite things here if your guests are in vienna on a thursday the museum stays open late and in this center rotunda is a beautiful restaurant yeah. and they do a thursday night gourmet dinner so the table is held for your guests the whole night and they can eat and then go look at art and then come back and eat more and go look at art and i always do this on a thursday with one of the um, museum guides and it's a really special experience when you can see the museum with you know no crowds yeah but um you know what I, you know museums always sound so intimidating so we touched about that actually um when we were talking about vienna is actually a great city um for families so most of those museums offer specific tours catered to um uh children and you know multi-generational um families and actually i think when um it's it's one of your favorite topics to talk about how beautiful vienna is for um yes. uh, families probably because i'm a parent and anything i've done for families has been road tested by either my child or my colleague Lori that many of you have worked with, we've uh, sent her and her daughter to these places. So Vienna, perfect for families for a couple of reasons. As Marie said with the museums, yes, we can cater towards, towards kids, but what's also nice is a lot of these museums offer hands-on little workshops for kids. I had a multi-gen family a couple of years ago do like a gold leaf class at mm -hmm. Belvedere and they can do painting classes at Kunsthistorisches. And what you see here in this slide is one of the horse-drawn carriages that yeah. you see all throughout Vienna. And there's even um, a possibility of doing this with like a progressive dinner, which is super cool for, you know, romantic adults or families. And it's just a really nice a nice way to overcome what could be like an intimidating cultural destination and make it more accessible to people at multiple age levels and multiple interest levels there's really something for everyone. Yeah, so, and I what I what I also like what people, you know, with there are also like specific um, um, museums, um, I mean, also not only like the children's museum we talked about at Schimbron Palace, but also the uh, museums of illusions, for example, do you know that one? I don't know that one, but I love music, the yeah. House of oh, Music. Oh, the, the, mm -hmm. the House of Music, yeah, perfect. Where you can conduct your own symphony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and maybe if you're lucky, um, the, the, the Vienna Philharmonics are not laughing at you. Yeah, <laughs> they laugh at you if you do it badly. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> well, it happened to me, I have to say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we talked about, I mean, you know, travel is also a lot about, uh, for me, also for culinary experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, for me, you know, Vienna, what would Vienna be without, you know, the coffee houses, um, all the great restaurants and bars, um, and, you know, I mean, don't leave Vienna without going to a coffee house. Um, it's kind of, um, it's it's Vienna's um, extended living room um, if, or for, for Viennese, sorry. Um, you know, we just go there and spend an afternoon there, read the, you know, the newspapers, chat with friends. Um, it's totally okay if you spend like a whole afternoon in a coffee house, just ordering one drink, like no one will bother you um maybe you know get some cake um usually they have like beautiful displays of of cakes and desserts and stuff like that um i will say americans don't know how to do that we don't know how to sit all day in a coffee house but yeah. 
Um, I find the Vienna coffee house is also different and all interesting because they each have their own like special little history. Like this is the one where the writers from the Spanish writing school go. And this is the one where Freud used to hang out. And so often when I have a guide with guests, I have them kind of peek into several and yeah. figure out how the whole ordering system works so people can go back and enjoy them. It's really such a quintessential part of Vienna. It's sad to like miss that little component. And I often include it even just in the center, you can see four or five different ones that are all completely unique. So it's a really, it's a really great way to kind of feel like a local instead of like a tourist. Yeah. And there are also now more and more popping up um, places that take, you know, different take um, like a modern twist to like the traditional coffee house. And I know how that sounds, um, but it's not like it's usually in a very authentic and natural way. It's not like everything modern or something like that. It's just, you know, smaller places that roast their own coffee and 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 sell it. So it's really there's some beautiful modern twists on the traditional coffee houses as well. Absolutely. And even though this house or this slide says coffee house, you did mention culinary. And I will say Vienna is a culinary capital for Austria. And this is one place, even though I'm a big fan of serendipity, this is one place where I absolutely recommend dinner reservations every night. Um, I'm happy to do it for your guests. Or if you're not working with us and you ask the hotel concierge, they'll do it. Better to have a reservation and change your mind later than not have one. And that means your guests are eating it like you know, a touristy place. And uh, I, there's so much here from like casual to Michelin star, Austrian to Italian to Asian to vegetarian. There's really a, a huge range of restaurants and it's something that you have to experience while you're there. And uh, I'll lead into your slide about markets because I love the markets in Vienna. I'm in Florida, we have nothing like this. Yeah. Um, and we can do market tours, or sometimes I just tell people to go to the market before they get on a train, because it's a great place to pick up snacks to take with you on the train. So yeah. Yeah. it's it's so unique to Vienna, and there are beautiful ones right in the city center, that, it, and they're not geared towards tourists. They're for locals, and the locals are there. I know, and also, I mean, there's no, for me, there's no you know better way to experience a little bit of the history and culture of a place when you you know taste yourself through local food and vienna is actually such a melting pot where like different cultures meet like you have turkish influences and and uh, mediterranean and uh, especially also from like the czech republic uh, and it's really beautiful just to taste your way to um, all the, the different local flavors. Uh, and of course, we, there are cooking classes you can do, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So it's really, really, um, yeah, perfect way to experience um, a city. And then, I mean, leading, you know, Viennese wine, not a lot of people know that actually, that um, Vienna is um, the only capital in the world that has significant wine growth within city limits. Um, and, you know, especially if you spend more than three nights in Vienna, um, you can, you know, that it gives you time to really venture outside the city center and to experience um, Viennese vineyards. This place is called the Vienna Woods. It's literally just a suburb of Vienna. Yep. And we have people experience it in so many different ways. Sometimes our guests just go for wine tasting, which is completely fine. These are really great local vintners. And if you're there in the right season, you can go to Heuerger, yep. which I love. These are wine taverns where they're like super casual food, sometimes music serving the season's yep. wine. It's a again truly local experience yeah. but also the nice thing about this area is it's bikeable and we didn't really talk about that too much but I will say Vienna is one of the few capital cities where I can send guests and I know they will not get run over if they want to do a biking tour because the bike lanes in Vienna are situated away from the traffic which makes me comfortable selling that even for a family and you can get e-bikes because we're all lazy Americans and I'm not biking uphill <laughs> but this is bikeable from the city center so you can 
take a bike tour and go right up into the vineyards. It's really wonderful. I've had people do that. And then we send a driver to pick up the bikes and take them back after they've been drinking and eating. But <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful way to get a tiny little taste of countryside. And literally, this is 20 minutes outside the center. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And I honestly, I like the views. It's just gorgeous. Um, but speaking of going outside of the city, um, you know, actually half of the, the, the city space um, in Vienna is green space. Um, and not a lot of people know that. So it really gives you the possibility to, you know, I mean, as you can see on a picture, yeah, take a boat ride, jump into the old Danube, um, or, you know, go, go jogging, even hiking in the Vienna woods, or um, you can also discover the, the city by bike. Yeah, yeah, it's a, I love to incorporate the outdoors because so many people think city, city, city and forget yeah. about all of the actual active slash green things you can do and Vienna is perfect for that. Yeah. So now we're coming to a topic a lot of people are pro probably wondering about Christmas markets and will Christmas park markets take place this year? So currently, the current situation is, yes, uh, we are planning on uh, organizing Christmas markets. Um, the Austrian um, government actually, you know, they, they kind of set the standards, what um, all the Christmas market organizers have to consider. So um, we also have the updated um, dates on our website already so go to vienna.info and you find a list of all the Christmas markets and the planned dates. I have a personal addiction to Christmas markets and I'm <laughs> not afraid to admit it. Um, what I love about Vienna is the number of markets because I don't feel like I have to go to like Rathaus which is giant and busy. You can go to little neighborhood markets and really get a like a cozy or feel to them. And the other thing that has changed so much in the time I've been at Exeter is when I first started, Christmas markets were done on Christmas Eve. And now slowly more and more every year reopen after the 26th as New Year's markets, which just extends the, the street food and the shopping and the parties. So it's, and they open in November, which is fantastic. Yes, so know. like, so by middle of November, you can actually start you know, sending guests here for festive. And for the yeah. U.S., that means for people that are off school Thanksgiving week, it's a really slow time for hotels. So great hotel deals and Christmas markets. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And same applies to, because I'm looking at the time now and, you know, let, let's just um, um, <laughs> be mindful of the time. Um, so same applies to um, ball season. Currently, you know, the, the balls are scheduled um, and it's, yeah, it just requires a little bit more flexibility from us um, this year, you know, about rules and regulations. So stay tuned, but currently they are planned. And I will say, if you have guests that were obsessed with Bridgerton, that's a way to live out the fantasy, not in London, in Vienna at yeah. these balls, and we can get dancing lessons for them beforehand. So no stress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, let me, because, um, um, let me look at the time. So we have one more minute. I'll talk fast. I'll okay. be really fast. Everybody forgets that Vienna has a lot of Jewish heritage and yeah. I get people that do Prague, Vienna, Budapest, and they think the Jewish sites are only in Prague and Budapest and that is not so. This unassuming little building right in the center of Vienna is Shishtat Temple. It's the only surviving temple, I think, from Kristallnacht. And um, we often take our Jewish guests here, look at the inside from yes. that entry. It's amazing. Um, there's a fantastic Jewish museum like around the corner from the opera house and the soccer that we often take guests to. Um, the Jewish cemetery is part of the central cemetery. Yes. So you and can see graves beautiful. of famous composers and Jewish, yeah. you know, people in Jewish life. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I have guests that forget that Vienna has such a strong Jewish heritage. And here's a place too, where I have some really fantastic, very fun Jewish guides that are great to match with your guests who have this interest. Yeah. And then, of course, the Freud Museum, which recently uh, got renovated. Yeah. But let me leave you with one more tip before we part. And that's actually please join the Vienna Experts Club. Um, it's an exclusive. It's for free. No worries. You just have to sign up for travel um, advisors. For it's travel for travel advisors, advisors and it gives you all kind of benefits and perks. So please sign up 
um, and and make the most out of your stay in Vienna because you get a lot of free goodies. If, if you're going to Vienna, you have to sign up. It's free admission to most of the museums, free Metro card, yeah. um, discounts at some of the restaurants. It's definitely worth it. Yeah. So um, we will get to all your questions um, 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 via email, correct? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Um, thank you so much for joining everyone. Um, here are our contact details, most important um, piece of information you're going to take with you. Thank you so much, Gwen, for taking the time and organizing everything. Um, thanks, Marie. And I hope I see you all in Vienna. Yes, thanks everyone. I'll send everyone a link. Um, and thanks so much for joining us for a quick little look at Vienna. Thank you. Have Bye. a great afternoon. Bye. Bye.